You guys, you guys hungry this morning? Amen. Okay, if you didn't come hungry, I don't know. You got to purge or something because you got to get hungry quick. There's a good word coming up. I'm really excited about this message. It might not seem like it. Not very, not very passionate right now, but four year olds be terrible. Um, y'all can take him. Thank you, Kim, for taking him this afternoon. Good luck. Um, <laughs> no, uh, kids will be kids, and that, that's awesome. So, hey, uh, how many of you know that the word was not designed specifically just for you? It was, but it wasn't. It was designed for everyone. The Word was designed for everyone, and so am I, and so is Christ's new covenant. We're we're continuing this series, Move, the mission for others, the vision for everyone. So we're on everyone right now. Everyone is the title of this message. That's kind of an odd title. It's a very vague title. It doesn't get any point across other than everyone. Here's the thing. Everyone is designed for Him, and He is designed for everyone. They just haven't realized it yet. He is, or He will because He is. He will because He is. That is designed for everyone. Everyone has the same opportunities, the same choices, the same decisions, not in every part of your life, but in effect, they they have the same opportunities as you and I. We have the same opportunities to share the gospel or not share the gospel. And they have the same opportunities to hear the gospel or not hear the gospel. And so, He is designed for everyone, and and everyone has the same opportunities to either accept Him or reject Him. You deserve Him, and so do they. Maybe someone in this room is thinking about somebody specific right now, as we get started, that deserves God, but they don't see it yet. We've been taught all our life, you don't deserve Him. That's why we have grace. And they're right. But the reality is, is Jesus made you able to deserve it. Through Him dying on the cross, you now, whether you believe or don't believe, deserve Him. And you need to hear that. We, we deserve Him, and, and whoever they are deserve Him as well. So let's dig into the Word. John 1, 1 through 1-5. Y'all know this Word. And if you don't, I'm going to read it for you. In the beginning... The Word already existed. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. They're talking about Jesus. If you forgot that the Word means Jesus in this scripture, then let me re-enlighten you that Jesus is who they're talking about and nothing was created except through Jesus. God did not just go, hey Jesus, I'm not going to include you. I'm going to make this without you. No, he said, hey, through you, I'm going to make this. He said, hey, through you, you're going to bring on life. When he was here on this planet in physical form, he brought life and he continues to do that to this day. See, we're we're run into the world. We run into this world, and the world is full of darkness. And the world is saying, hey, guess what? We can take whatever we want, whenever we want, and we can kill whoever we want, when we want. In fact, one side of the the platform says, I want to kill everybody on the other side of the platform. We're nasty to each other. We don't like each other. We don't want to deal with someone else's uh, else's junk. We don't want to deal with their blindness, but we, we have to. Jesus called us to love one another, and love means that we see beyond the faults. Hey, your fault might be that you don't see that they don't know. And so you have to see beyond their unknowingness to love them. So all of a sudden you get into this idea that that Jesus was everything to God. Stated right there in John 1.1, in the beginning was the Word and nothing was created through just God. It had to go through the Word. So everything is, Jesus means everything to God. And so you see that, and and you see this this idea that Jesus brought light to the world. And this translation literally says it brought light to everyone. Everyone. Everyone has the same opportunities you had so many years ago when you gave your life over to God to accept the light into your life. Everyone. And that 
requires us to stop pinpointing what their issues are and start looking beyond them to love them. Oh, wow. I'm not just talking about spouses here. I'm talking about complete strangers. I'm talking about the ones that you know are sinning and you love them, but you actually love them past their faults. I'm talking about the young kids that don't know what's going on and they like to eat Tide Pods and you're looking past that that disgusting thing that they're doing that's going to kill them and you're loving them. You're informing them that if they eat that, they're going to die because death is not life and I want to produce life. You're going to the mayor of New York, the governor of New York, whoever it was, that put in that law and you're saying, hey man, you just allowed death to enter in. You've got to answer for that. I want to produce life and I want to encourage you into it. Hey, Virginia, I want to encourage you into life. I don't want to encourage you the other direction because that's death. That's no breath. That's no, no, no heartbeat. That's depression. That's sickness. That's, that's doubt. That's worry. That's name your issue. And that's what that is. Right? And so Jesus is saying, hey, you got to look past that. Look past the issues and love each other. Go loving each other. We all have issues. And if you're saying, no, we don't, look in the mirror again. <laughs> you know, we all have issues. And it's not something God created. It's what we've created in ourselves or what someone else has tried to put into us. And we'll get into that in here in a second. But Jesus came to bring the light to the world, to everyone. If we only were able to speak life, man, things would be so much better. But when, when someone attacks us, our... Our inclination is what? To swing back. I remember a story. This isn't in my notes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you. David was sitting there playing the harp or the lyre or whatever he was playing, right? He was playing one of them stringed instruments. He's playing the guitar, probably electric at that time. And he was just doing his little thing, right? And he, he's sitting there and, and King Saul is getting so frustrated because of this tormenting spirit that God has placed on him. And he picks up a spear and he throws it. In our inclination, in our day, in our moments, in our situations, every one of us would be willing to say that we picked up the same spear and thrown it right back at him. And if you're not willing to say that, relook at your entire life and find one moment where you didn't and just look at that. Because that's the one moment that you did what God wanted you to do. But if you were saying, yeah, I've done that. Look at that moment and look what you can still learn from that one moment in your life to go on from today. Because God's saying, hey, guess what? When, when someone you don't know throws a spear at you, even though they don't know you, don't throw it back, love them. Don't throw it back because that doesn't honor God. That's why David didn't throw the spear back. One, if he would have thrown it, he would have dishonored his king. But two, he would have dishonored God above all of the others. He would have said, God appointed Saul king. Yeah, he anointed me, but he appointed him right now. And I'm learning. And so, so here David is not picking up a spear that was just thrown at him, and he continues playing. He continues trying to take that tormenting spirit away from Saul. He continues serving the Lord. And when someone tries to throw a spear at you, if you, pick up, if you stop serving the Lord, pick up that spear and start trying to kill him, Man, get over yourselves, right? I, I got to tell myself randomly throughout my week sometimes, man, man, get over yourself. Why? Because I'm human and I make mistakes. And, and guess what? I'm going to have to apologize sooner or later for something. And I'm going to, but I'm going to try and fix it. John 8 verse 1 says this. Jesus returned to the Mount of Olives. But early the next morning, he was back again at the temple. A crowd soon gathered, and he sat down and taught them. As he was speaking, the teachers of religious law and Pharisees brought a woman who had, caught, who had been caught in the act of adultery. They put her in front of the crowd. I wanted to title this message, The Mercy and Grace We Wish We Had. The mercy and grace we look back on and go, Oh, but remember back in the day? Jesus went to make himself available. He went where he needed to go to make himself available. 
He made a scene because he needed to become available. He did not, he did not make a nuisance of himself. He made a scene. Anybody make a scene lately? July 4th, around that time, I plan on making a scene. Throwing some water balloons at some people. Or having them thrown at me. Whatever. But we're going to make a scene. Why? Because we need to make ourselves available to people. We're going to make a scene and we're going to love each other and we're going to bless each other and we're going to, we're going to look past our faults and we're going to start finding what it really means to love a community more than ourselves. Not just praying for them, but putting hands on them in a good way. Jesus has called us to make ourselves available just like he made himself available. And then after he died, he made the Holy Spirit available. You know, God's about availability. Have you recognized that in your life? He's available to you. Are you available to him? That's not even in my notes. That happens almost every Sunday anymore. See, see, Jesus, Jesus is there, and these religious leaders know he's available. So they bring somebody they are judging to him. Right? And they judge her, and they bring her to the forefront in front of the entire crowd and go, ha ha! We got her now. And all these people are going to see him make a mistake. Let's see what he does. John 8, 4. Teacher, they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her. What do you say? They were trying to trap him into saying something they could use against him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote in the dust with his finger. How would that be that something you found so important to go to the judge and say, well, they did me wrong. And the judge looks at you and stoops down and just starts writing in the dust. You know, you would think, wow, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. Well, Jesus is doing that. You know, it continues. Verse 7, they kept demanding an answer. So he stood up and again, stood up again and said, all right, but let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Then he stooped down again and wrote in the dust. When the accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. To me, this is laughable. Jesus signs the document, go ahead and kill her. He does. He says, hey, go ahead, throw the first stone. You who think you don't have any sin at all, go ahead and throw the first stone. Do it. I triple dog dare you. Here, you know what? I'll give you a stone. Go ahead and throw it. You're, you're without sin. Go ahead and throw it. Right? How many times in our life do we throw stones spiritually at people? Let's think about that for a second. We say the word is for everyone, but yet we want to throw stones at those that need the word the most. We want to throw stones at those that we don't even know how to love yet. Maybe we should turn the mirror around and show our face and, and go, wow, I have to dig deeper. I have to go further. I have to look at my own self and, and figure out what's right, what's wrong. And, and wow, this never stops. I'm so tired. The other day I told, I told the board, they didn't even know I was going to say this. I told the board, if you're tired, vote me out. Because you're going to be a lot more tired next month. <laughs> Why? Because we weren't called to be tired. Jesus never said, hey, be tired and, and lay around. Be tired and go to sleep. He said, I'll give you the rest you need. But depend on me. And so... So here we have this, this thing, and, and Jesus is like, hey, throw the first stone. Let me sign the document. Let me hand you the stone. Let me hand you the murder weapon. Go for it. And as each person looked at it, the oldest first says, the oldest is the wisest. So the oldest goes, man, if I throw that, I am looking very bad. I want to throw it. There are days in our lives we're going to want to throw the stone but we got to step away. Jesus has already signed the document. You do what you want to do. You have a choice to make. You throw the first stone or else you can slip away or you can do what Jesus does in this situation. I love this because he says, you know, go for it. 
if you're perfect. Even the religious leaders knew they were not perfect. You know? They just weren't willing to admit it until they were called to the table. How many times is that us? I mean, I, I can probably tell you. Most times when I get in an argument with Lola, I realize that I'm the one trying to throw the stone. You can tell her I love her. <laughs> That's really the case, though. We, we, we have to admit that we're wrong and seek forgiveness. See, these le- religious leaders, they, they're missing something here. They're walking away instead of turning to Jesus and bowing down and saying, forgive us. They're missing something. Because how much cooler would it have been? I mean, the story is cool. But how much cooler would it have been to see those religious leaders get down on their knees and say, Lord, I can't. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry for even putting you in this situation. I mean, how many of us would fit that mold? Right? That's a crazy mold. But hey, if we're willing to admit that we fit the mold of the religious leaders, then we might be willing to admit that we fit the mold of the young lady at one time. And we might be able to mold ourselves into more like what Christ looks like in this moment. Wait, I just hit every character and we can all relate to each one. We should be able to. Maybe not with the particular sin, but maybe it's with another sin in our life. How many of us have ever not sinned? And no one's going to raise their hand. I mean, come on. If you really believe you have not sinned, I'm, uh, I'm bearer of bad news here. You know? Here's what's, what's crazy. Chapter 8, verse 10. Then Jesus stood up again and said to the woman, Where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? I mean, they did. I can just imagine her sitting there going, oh, Yeah, I thought so. But how'd you get them to... Are you going to throw a stone? Is it your turn? How many times in our, in our walk do we come across someone who's so beaten, so battered by the church? that they look at us and go, well, how are you going to throw a stone today? How are you going to hurt me today? See, everyone includes the people that are beaten, battered, and have done you wrong. Everyone is the people, are the people that, that they're beaten, they're battered, they've done wrong, they don't smell nice, they, they don't look very clean, they, they, they actually don't like you. They, maybe it's your worst enemy, and that's everyone. Everyone is the people that, that want to throw the spears at you and want to call you a, a hypocrite and a heathen, and you don't love people and you because you don't accept their lifestyle. You don't love Hey, guess what? I don't got to accept someone's lifestyle to love somebody. So why? Why am I faced with this, this idea of, of having, having a mission for others outside of myself and a vision for everyone, including myself. Like I deserve, we sit here and we go, I deserve the same mercy, the same grace that, that these sinners deserve. But then when we look at it, as we grow in our maturity and our faith with God, we look at them and go, why do they get that mercy, God? Because I'm not getting that mercy right now. Why do they get that grace, God? Because I'm not getting that grace right now. If we think about the disciples for a second, I wanted you to think about that story in the Bible that says that Jesus was approached by some kids and the disciples turned them away. And what Jesus do? He reprimanded the disciples. He said, what are you doing? They're the most deserving. But Lord, what about my grace? What about my mercy? What about, what about me, God? And I think it's great that right here, the Lord says to the lady, he says, she, she says this, no, Lord. No, none of them are around to condemn me. And then he says this, and Jesus said, neither do I. Go. Go. And sin no more. Go! Get out of here! Oh, P.S. Sin no more. It's an afterthought. You're human. There's more forgiveness. There's more grace. There's more mercy. You have it. Stop looking at God and blaming Him for not giving it to you. You already received it. Don't look for the past. Look for the future. We, we continually find ourselves going, do you remember the good old days? Maybe that's not the terminology you use. Remember back when. 
Stop remembering back when and start looking forward to the future because the future is change. I heard a pastor say this week, you know what? Christianity means change. Oh my goodness. Really? You mean I'm always looking to be made, be made new? You mean I'm always being looking to be like something different than I already am? I'm looking to be molded and changed and, oh no. What will I ever do? I'll never find out what I want to grow, grow up to be. Right? How many of us still look around and go, man, I, I just wish I could grow up to be, ah, I don't know, famous fisherman. You know? His name is Jesus. <laughs> see, see we, we think of maybe this lady that, that Jesus just told go and sin no more. We, we think of her and go, well, why does she get the more mercy, Jesus? Well, why does she get the more grace, Jesus? Well, why does she get the nicer version of Jesus, what seems like a nicer version anyway? Why does she get this wonderful, grace-filled, mercy-filled Jesus, and I get the reprimanding? I think uh, I'm going to repeat a story that I repeated last week. I think of the, the prodigal son. The prodigal son got the nice, wonderful dad who was forgiving. And the other son goes to dad complaining. Why are you throwing this party? Don't you understand? You're already mine. You're already here. Jesus does the same thing with the disciples, with the kids that go to, go to Jesus and, and want him, and they turn him away, and he goes, don't you understand? You're already mine, but they need me. You already have me, but they need me. See, the mission for others, the vision's for everyone. See, the mission's for everyone but me. Because I'm at work with the mission. And the vision is for everyone, including me. Here at Christ's New Covenant, our mission is a place to live your purpose. And when I think of that, I think of Jesus talking to this young lady. And, and the last words he says to her is, neither do I. Go and sin no more. If we're going to be more like Christ, we need to be more like this. We need to be more forgiving, more mercy-filled, more grace-filled, more, more peace-filled, more, more childlike with our faith. We need to, we need to be those, those children. My son goes up to strangers, and I'm like, no, 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 you don't know him. You're four years old. What are you doing? But we need that kind of faith with Jesus. We need to step out of our own comfort zone, enter the mission field, and expand the vision. We need to expand the vision because the vision's not just for Christ's new covenant and the people that currently attend Christ's new covenant. The vision is for everyone. Everyone is without borders. And Christ's new covenant needs to take down our borders. Amen? Christ's new covenant needs to take down our borders because guess what? Not like the state. Like I'm not getting into the whole border wall thing. I feel bad for those that can't make it. But I am under the belief that Jesus Christ has called everyone in this town to Christ's new covenant because we are a church without borders. Everyone in Lakin, our church does not stop at the doors. Our church starts at the doors. When we walk out, we walk in. See, Jesus, he will because he is. If we walk out, we're walking out because he will because he is. Hey, will someone go ahead and get Lola? Jesus did not give this woman freedom from her adulterous mindset. No, he said, now go and sin no more. We will see people who have adulterous mindsets and Jesus won't just instantly free them because their story's different than yours. But he's going to say, guess what? Go and sin no more. Go and make that decision. Go and drop the alcohol. Go and drop the weed. Go and drop this sin. Drop that going on. Your financial disaster, go and drop it. Go and take care of it. Go and make something happen. He's saying go. It's time to move. 
It's not time to sit back and, and just pray. I, that's good. That's great. That's needed. But it's time to sit, up, sit down, pray like you're preparing to go. And get up off your bum and go. Right? I mean, if I'm not preaching something that you're getting right now, if you have a confusion right now and you're not sitting there going, wow, this doesn't, res- this doesn't make sense with me, I'm sorry. But God is literally saying right now that we aren't supposed to be blind anymore. We expect God to treat us better than the blind. Really? Jesus is trying to set us free. And we've shut the door on Him. Jesus tries to set us free. And in our long Christian walk, somewhere down the road, I've been there, I've done that. I've shut the door on God. And God comes knocking at first. And then He comes knocking down. And when He knocks it down, He becomes that stumbling block that we found out last week about. And we trip and we fall on our face and we realize that on our face is the best place for us right now because we're only serving God. See, we have to take advantage of the freedom that He's already given us. See, he, He's given us freedom. And you have access to the rest of the freedom. But have you gone to take it? Have you gone to Him and said, Lord, I want this freedom. It's mine. I'm taking it. Because He says, go ahead and take it. Be free. It's yours. Does He not? When He died on the cross, didn't He say, hey, freedom is yours. You can live life now. You don't have to kill life to live it. You can live life now. Jesus died so you didn't have to die anymore. Yeah, you die to your worldly self and get rid of it. That's death on its, in itself. Your worldly self is death, but God is life. And so when we come across someone who says, hey, you Christians, you're blah, 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 blah. Good! I'm so glad I'm blah, 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 blah. Jesus is more than me. I'm going to be blah, blah, blah. But he's going to be life, life, life. So let me give you life. I don't care if you're calling me bad words right now. I want to give you life. You are worth it. You are someone. You have more. You have flaws, but I'm going to look past them. Because God loves you more than I could ever. You can flip me off a million times and I'm going to love you. Because Jesus loves you first. It sucks. Excuse me, but it does. It's hard. And we got to get over it. It being ourselves. Right? How many of you are hungry to be obedient to God, to have that measuring stick? When you look back at your life and go, when was I obedient to God? And you can go, I have faith because I was obedient to God. I was obedient. See that inch? I got an inch there because I was obedient. You see that one? That's a millimeter or something smaller. Because I was obedient to God. You see that? Because that's a mustard seed. Because I was obedient to God. And see that mountain that changed and moved and God did something? It's because I was obedient to God. If I'm out sharing the gospel, if I'm out telling people that they're loved and representing Christ that way, that when someone goes, well, you just hate people because they get abortions. No, I don't. I actually feel bad for them. I actually see them as, as Davids who, who committed adultery, possibly, and then went and killed because they couldn't handle that. Man. I see them as people that could possibly have the heart of God. Wow. See, the vision's for everybody. Jesus Jesus showed that to us. We can remember story upon story of Jesus confronting the disciples and, and how he confronted the disciples who followed him. But then how he treated the lost, the blind, the, the sick with compassion, with grace, with mercy. And all the time, sometimes in our life, we go, why, why don't you show me that, God? He did. And He is. It just looks a little different because 
He already knows you. See, he doesn't know them yet. He's trying to get to know them. He, he showed the ones who did not know him the grace we want or the mercy we want. But he told the ones that knew him, what are you doing? Do you get it? Do you get it? I've already shared that with you. Do you get it? When, when I go, God, God, I, I just don't get it. Why aren't you blessing me that way? And he's like, oh, Ben, Ben, didn't you get it? When you first came to me, didn't I share with you that mercy, that grace? Why aren't you sharing it with the rest of the world? I've already given you that. It's your turn. It's your turn. It's not, con con it's not, it's not molding yourself to the world. It's, it's molding yourself more to what Christ would do. Who Christ would be. It's not, it's not taking out your megaphone and going, you sinners, you heathens, I can't believe you would make that law. It's going, do you know that you can encourage life? Do you know that Jesus wants every baby born and they have a purpose right now? And that you're taking that purpose away and you're trying to play God right now. And you're going to find out sooner or later but Jesus loves you and them. And can I encourage you to produce life today? Maybe that's the title of this message. It's time to produce life. Grab your megaphones and encourage. Encourage like Jesus did. Go and produce life. Go, and don't just sleep around, lady. Produce life. Go and sin no more. You have freedom. You've had that mercy. You've had that grace. You've had that. Now use it. What God has blessed you with in the past, he wants to bring out of you right now. It's time to go and sin no more. Pick up your mat and walk with that this week. Pick up your mat and walk with that this week. Walk out with that. God has blessed me. I'm going to go share that blessing. God has shown me mercy. I'm going to share, show that mercy, that grace, that compassion, that love, that, that ever. Right now, he's talking to somebody. He's saying, hey, guess what? You've lived this life. Ben is talking to you. You've lived this. This is who you've been. This is where you're going. And he's talking to you right now. And you are sitting there and you're saying, yes, God, that is me. And I hate that I've become this. But Lord, I need you to set me free from this. This is a new grace, a new mercy. This is new. And he's saying, guess what? It's time to be free. That's what Matt, you're picking up. We're here for everyone. We are here for everyone. I'm not going to pay your bills, but I sure will go to battle with you spiritually. I'm not going to pay your bills, but I'm sure going to go to battle with you spiritually and for you. I'm going to go to the cross and I'm going to beg and plead with Jesus. And Jesus is going to take my pleads and my begging and he's going to go to God sitting right next to him and he's going to go, don't you hear him, God? They're in desperate pursuit of you. And people are going to walk into this church and they're going to go, wow, what a desperate pursuit of God that's happening there. Not just, hey, I can feel the tangible comfort feeling of the Holy Spirit anymore. That sounds so Excuse me, but that sounds so pathetic. Because God is a warrior. And we're supposed to be worshipers and warriors. We're supposed to worship and while people throw spears at us, we're just playing that guitar for Jesus. I don't play guitar, but come on. That air guitar for Jesus. And we just play and we play and people are throwing spears and we're like, yeah, come on. Let one hit me. God, take me out. Because what's better than living for you is dying for you. But I get to live for you, so take me out. This mission is for everyone. The vision is for everyone. Now pick up your mat. Put that on your mind. I'm going to pray. I'm going to just stand here. If you want prayer, if that's you, if you're saying, I'm sick of who I've become, I want to become more like Christ. I'm sick of having this stagnant 
life I've had. Everybody has a stagnant part of their life, but if you're sick of it, come up and receive prayer because we're going to break chains this morning. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I want to break chains this morning. Thank you for already breaking them ahead of time, but Lord, we're asking for a, a fresh breaking. Break us, God, for what breaks you. Let us not focus on what's coming up, but let's focus on who you are. God, we want to express an, a, we want to experience a tangible spirit. We want to experience what you've got, but Lord, we want to go out. We want to move. We want about we want to be about everybody. We want to go and re rescue. We want to rescue people from sin. We want to rescue people from hell. We want to bring them into the, the saving grace of who you are. We want them to experience the same grace, the same mercy, the same compassion that we've experienced in our own life. But Lord, help us see past all the flaws, see past all the controversy. Lord, help us defeat what's going on in the media with the love that you have for us. Let's be different, God. Help us be different. Lord, I pray right now that you would start speaking to people as I stand here. And Lord, that you would change our lives. Make us moldable, pliable, and ready to do your work. Lord, give us a fresh new energy in your name. Amen.